whether it's a minivan out front of your head. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the situation of a upper middle class married white gay dude is not the same as uh, a, a trans kid in Texas or, um, uh, or any number of LGBTQ people of color uh, trying to survive right now. Um, but I think we're actually in an exceptionally ugly moment in terms of some figures deciding that there's utility, political utility in targeting um, trans people and, and LGBTQ people more generally. I mean, look how many people voted against marriage equality, which should have been an easy one um, just recently as a few months ago. And so I think it's a reminder that none of what's been gained is really uh, locked in. I, I, I don't think anything is safe. I mean, Roe just fell, and that was a lot of land for longer than I'd been alive. Nothing is safe, especially right now, when you have one side that has a maximalist commitment to tearing down every norm uh, and, uh, and law they don't like. So where does that put us? And by the way, why is it happening? I think it's happening because there are some people who find it easier to pick on really vulnerable young people than to explain why they voted no on money for roads and bridges or stood in the way of $35 insulin or uh, are insisting on making it easier for wealthy people to cheat on their taxes by starving uh, uh, the, the enforcement resources that would have helped take care of that. They don't want to talk about that stuff. Um, so they do this instead. A huge amount of energy and effort is being wasted in these dumb fights. And that's really unfortunate. It's, it's, it's policy waste in order to achieve political benefit or perceived political benefit. Uh, I talk to governors all the time, Republican and Democrat. I talked to a governor before I got here today. It's about their aspirations, their hopes. Sometimes they're, they're appealing to us to get something done. Sometimes they're mad at us because of a policy call. Sometimes they're, uh, uh, they just want to work together on something. Sometimes I need their help. I've never heard from this governor. And it's not because I've never called him. We've never spoken. Um, well, what I will say is we've done a lot of good work with the Florida Department of Transportation. We, we've got really good resources here. And a lot of governors and senators, for that matter, are beating down our doors to make sure that their states benefit. Um, and while we try to allocate those funds based on merit, not based on uh, how aggressively somebody phone banked us, um, it remains the case that, that, it, that it doesn't hurt to actually hear from the elected leadership of the state about what their priorities are and how they want to work together. Um, but, you know, it's not like we're going to punish the, the, the constituents of any elected leader because that elected leader is, uh, um, is focused on other things. But it is a missed opportunity uh, if, if an elected leader isn't uh, advocating for their constituents' needs. I mean, that's what we expect uh, is, is to field lots of calls from, from lots of governors, members, senators, explaining why they believe the, the projects they're trying to get done are the most deserving. And we try to take that on board and, and, and integrate that into decision making. But he's more worried about Bud Light or Disney or whatever. That's his choice.